right, so we're going to go ahead and open up tonight's meeting. It is Monday, August 1st. Um, and we're here at uh, the John Hogan Meeting Room at the 79th School Street, Moortown Select Board. And uh, so we'll open tonight with public comment. And Chris, is that you or Deb? Uh, yes, I'm here for public comment. And uh, so am I. All right, so let's go ahead and start on the left with Chris. Uh, so Chris Stevenson, yeah, I live on Pony Farm Road. Um, I'm on a rec committee, Chair, just for those who don't know me, and um, we made a motion recently at our meeting, and I want to make sure that there's support to, in conjunction with the uh, Morefest committee and the school, to remove five chunks of fence in front of the pavilion to allow for better traffic flow. Um, you know, for more fast reasons, when we put the band in there and we can get across. Um, and further to um, fix the fence, we had either an accident. I mean, they won't be in there. Let me mute this guy. All right. Uh, we have either an accident or vandalism on that gate next to the sign here. I, you know, to me, it looks like it caught on someone's motorcycle wheel, or who knows? I, it just. It looks like it would hurt a person to do that much damage, but the gate needs to be removed altogether or repaired. Um, and then there's a few clips that have undone themselves. That's pretty minor. Um, and further to remove the two spring heads that randomly stick out from the field that we've yet to find anyone that wants to defend their existence. Um, one is between the baseball diamond back cage and pavilion, and then the other one is right in front of the pavilion at the end of the fence, which what would you call? Like a, it's a spring head pump, like, oh, I think it's a, well, I guess I learned half a story. I mean, it, it appeared to me to be fed from a spring up high, and that was some sort of pump to get the water going, but I had heard from Greg Wagner that it was actually tied into the school. Um, but it wasn't working and it wouldn't be allowable anyway because of their ultraviolet filtering system. These are things I know that much about. <laughs> um, so the idea would be to get rid of those two spring heads, um, which I think we need the town support on, and then connect with the fence company to fix the gate. Um, in our budget, the, in our non-existent budget that we're working with you guys on, <laughs> Um, we had earmarked $400 for this, and as I understand it, the school would split the cost, so that's another $400, so that in theory would be $800. Um, I'm not sure with the gate damage if that's totally enough, but uh, I certainly want to make sure we have your general support and then work on getting a quote. Ray, what do you think? Yeah, um, it would be really good. Good to know for sure before you take those out that they don't belong to Eugene or somebody else. Well, uh, so spring. yeah, I mean, I think Greg was pretty confident in their history and their recent history. Um, I could try and get that in writing. Yeah, I, I would definitely check with Eugene. <laughs> Eugene, right here, yeah, right. Eugene Graham, right here in this house. house. Yeah, I'm sure that he doesn't have uh, those aren't his because okay. that would be. We'd be putting them back up. Okay, I, will, I can personally, I can do that, that's fine. Uh, and the fence that you're talking, taking out, and that's something that will be out permanently, is that correct? Yes, so right, as you kind of go down the road, and the things on the left, the fence randomly kind of ends, um, defining the lower field right. essentially. So we would take five sections of it back. Uh, Maybe they're 10 foot sections. I didn't measure them. Yeah. Um, it brings you back just the bus of the gate. Yeah, it gives you a section or two. Yeah, it's halfway to the gate, I'd say. There's still um, a little bit. And actually, it was also pointed out by Stefan that it would probably help with getting the climbing wall out there for more fest, because it's been a hassle for them to figure out how to get through some of the ditching. Um, and it might even help with the med back site. So does it make sense then to come to the um, gate 
itself rather than just have that piece jutting out? I mean, what is that used for now? I think um, there's a couple things on that. Mandy was wanting to uphold the quality of the baseball diamond. The kids use the backstop, so she was talking more about that. But nobody knows why we have that wrap for the ball field. And recently, I heard we did invest and did a nice investment in the diamond material, and it's grown in probably with crabgrass. So I reached out to um, Couples Field, actually, to talk to them about demand for baseball fields um, and you know, explore what they might know or maybe even make a partner. Maybe they want to fix it up for us because they have overflow. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> That's a good idea. I I think, I think, I think, once, once the left field has been bought up um, on the airport road, yeah, yeah. The airport road, I think that they didn't really need this anymore. At least that's how I understand. Yeah. So I think there's been discussion about sunsetting baseball together or fixing it up. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, my guess is as good as anyone else who doesn't have any facts. Um, it would be great to see if we could find people using it as baseball diamond because it's half. It's not like, yeah, 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 field. Yeah. 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 So to circle back to your question, the more fence we remove, the more balls would roll right. into the river and pollinate our garden. Yeah. All right, so why don't we, I think your original uh, suggestion is probably start with five. Yes. Yeah. We can always remove more, we discussed. Yeah, because <laughs> folks do play soccer back to this, so I'm sure they Yeah, stops, so. they do. Yeah. True. All right. Um, is that all you have for us, Chris? Um, yeah, I mean, I just want you to case if you want them, but that's the really important one. Um, what does the gate I, I guess, is it, I mean, is it something that we're locking or we're not doing? It's during, certainly during school time or school hours, it's supposed to be locked. Um, because the idea is they don't want traffic that makes sense because all the kids mm -hmm. going back and forth. As a town, we've always wanted it locked in the evening because we had problems with vandalism or, or you know, partying without picking up after themselves, you know. Um, does it always get locked? Probably not. Um, and so Stefan or someone consciously does it, and it's what we for a few days here and there. The key is accessible to everyone because it is uh, for emergency in case someone has a problem up on the trails or on the tennis courts, we've left that key. So I mean, it's widely known. It's, it's keeping, the lock is keeping honest people out, basically. We're just the threat of it being locked. Right? Yeah. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen a lock in a long time since we changed the lock and it got unlocked and it unlocked. Um, and I, another point was made to me that this lock fills up with traffic and we're starting to get more use here. So it's there's a benefit, I think, to having our direct traffic out of the school lot. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we're going to tie that We had a request for over the spring. <laughs> And the information that I got was, it was more to do, again, with the, the kids in the, during the school year. Mm -hmm. So certainly during the summer, I don't. Yeah, there was a sign in the, I don't know how much time it was, in the gazebo, in the, what do you call it, the, the entrance signage there that said that the playground, and, or that everything was closed from 7.30 to 2.30. Um, so we took that down because that's not true. Right, so, that's, all right, so. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to talk to Mandy about anything. I mean, part of the town forest plan that we're doing is working with the school to identify their classrooms um, and use that to put a hunting boundary, classroom boundaries, so they don't keep moving classrooms on and off the trail. And then we should talk about, we'll talk about traffic corridor and location of a, another bathroom that Mandy's interested in. And honestly, the kids should probably go to the playground to a different route than the road. Um, should be considered as well. All right. Do that type of things. Yeah. That's all good stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. I know you guys are working on a lot of good things. <laughs> Appreciate it. The gardens look good. Looking for a little, hope some more color comes up with them as well. Look at the little, a lot of white out there. I was looking for some color. Oh, the wildflowers? Yes. Yes. So you're not the only, so that's just buckwheat and it's sort of just a cover crop. Um, to keep it from drying out yeah. and 
Um, if you look closely, especially if you go around the back, you'll see some wildflowers right in there. Nice, good. I think it's a roll of the dice to see, and some are planted in there with roots, so and those are like leaf and those are already seeding. So we'll roll the dice to see how awesome it looks. We can always do it again in a year or two. I think the yeah, soil quality nice. is low here, and the one up there actually looks a lot better. Um, I think it's nice. It's nice to have. Yeah. A lot of bees around that I saw the other day. Very good. So, Deb, what you got for us tonight? So, I'm back about the rental property on 100B um, that I'm concerned about. I Last time I was in, uh, our head officer had written a letter to the property owner saying that some action needed to be done. Um, I spoke briefly to him, and my understanding is that no action, there's been very little movement on fixing any part of the property, and um, that the renters are now, or at least some of them, are putting their rent in escrow. Um, so I guess I'm just here to bring this issue up against uh, up again with the town um, in terms of what, if anything, we can do to support renters. Um, the health officer had spoken to me at one point about the, having a court order that gives deadlines for work needing to be done at, at certain times, which would be preferable to um, condemning the building, in which case everybody would have to move and nobody wants that. So I am here, I guess, to express my concern, as I did a few weeks ago, to us having this property and allowing this really health violations to continue in our town and people to essentially be living in a slum, uninhabitable situation. Um, and this letter was written from the health officer on July 1st, and, had, and the property owner had 15 days to business days to respond, so it's gone past that point. And um, when did you speak with Dick? When did you speak with Dick last? Today. Today, okay. Because he has sent it over to Ron to order, do a health order, but you know, oh, he didn't <laughs> tell me that. That's it. But that's okay. Um, then I guess my question is does the select board support that and willing to, um, with what Ron comes up with in terms of how to move forward to? bring this property up to responsible living conditions. Well, it's been with the select for support that it's gotten to our, the town attorney at this point. Um, so when we uh, get back some information from uh, the attorney, uh, I'm sure uh, that, that the board, uh, I guess I should just shouldn't say I'm sure, but it's likely the board will uh, go along with their recommendations uh, to move forward, uh, and you know we're pursuing this for a reason <laughs> because of the way it is. So um, okay. it's, it's it's not to send a ten and wonder what to do. It's really all right. We want to take action on this. Um, you know, and Dick's trying to do his job by the uh, right. book, and as we all are. And so you know, sometimes you know, and sometimes Dick can't tell you things that sure. um, that are going on as well, but. Uh, you can rest assured, uh, as long as I'm here, that we are working on it. And it's not something that's being kicked around in the circle either. I mean, it's going to the appropriate people at, uh, you know, the, the times that it allows. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for your time and all of that. I just want to be sure that this does continue to be. Sure. No, I understand. I think I, thank you for, uh, for advocating. For okay. Well, it's nice. All right. Very good. I'm done. I'll see you later. All right, Deb, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> All right, so uh, now we, is there any other um, public comment? Kristen Rogers. Hi. So I just, I know Lisa was in. I'm coming as a person from the school board. And I know Lisa stopped in on July 5th to uh, talk about our meet and greets with our new superintendent, Dr. Mike. And so I wanted to just, uh, you know, prom keep promoting them. So we do have a meet and greet coming up on Wednesday, August 17th. 
at the Warren Town Hall from 5 to 7.30. And that address is 413 Main Street in Warren. And then we have another meet and greet on Saturday, September 10th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Waysfield Farmer's Market. So I just want to, you know, continue to keep the word out there so people can feel free to stop by and see him. And um, for those who are not going to be able to attend um, these in person, we are going to be hosting a Zoom kind of Q&A with him at some point in the fall. Uh, Chris, I, I believe he has um, also uh, decided that he's going to join us at Morefest for the uh, yes, cake eating contest. <laughs> he thinks it's yes, a judging contest, but it's actually an eating contest. Yeah, and he's the, he's definitely, um, you know, if there's more events <clears throat> that, you know, more town's going to be holding, anything like that, he definitely wants to be part of all of our town's community. So he's, you know, if there's anything else that's special that's coming up, um, definitely feel free to you know, let him know because he definitely would be interested in, in seeing what's out there. He really wants to get to know all of our towns. Well, that's, that's encouraging. Thank you. And thank you for letting us know um, about the upcoming uh, meetings. Yep. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great meeting. Thank you. All right. Do we have anyone else online that was here for uh, public comments? Mike uh, Morgano, do you have public comment this evening? No, no, not for me. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, so anyone else here public comments? We're all good. All right, so we are going to move on to the uh, upper right-hand square with Clark Amidon. He is here uh, for the village wastewater discussion. Clark, the Hey folks, uh, I'm uh, sorry it's taken us so long to uh, get back to you here. Uh, just to give you a, a, a um, kind of where we're at at this point, that there has been a, a, a small committee of Moortown residents that have been um, taking some time to take a look at proposals from Two Boys and King uh, and Otter Creek um, Engineering to do a feasibility study for a village waste project. And the, um, the RFQs went out uh, during the winter. The proposals came in uh, early spring. And finally, the, uh, we formed the committee, and it's met um, a couple of times uh, in, in uh, late May and June to formulate uh, our approach. Uh, in late June, we had interviews with both uh, Otter Creek and Dubois and King. Um, and, and due to vacations and people being out of town, we weren't able to actually sit down and um, review the, the interviews that we had with the firms and uh, make our recommendation for um, feasibility study. Um, so that's where we're at point. And I just want to double check. I'm, uh, you know, I'm here to pass along the committee's recommendation for which one of the firms to do the feasibility study um and tom i checked with you and this is not something that is going to be an executive session this will be an open meeting is that correct that is correct yeah. okay great okay so just to cut to the case um uh, both firms were outstanding in their presentations and also in the interviews and the committee felt um lucky that um you know these are firms that are, are active and working and doing great projects in vermont uh, both firms uh, have done feasibility studies or engineering um, studies for similar projects. Um, but after uh, taking a look at both of the firm's uh, proposals uh, and the um, interaction that we had with the firms, um, the committee would like to recommend to the select board that, they, that we choose the Otter Creek engineering folks to do the engineering study. Very good, right? Yeah, have, have they been on that notified corner? No, no, they haven't, Ray, because I didn't feel like, like it was our um, position to okay. do that. I let them know that we needed to meet with the select board um, to make the recommendation. And if the select board chooses to go along with that, then um, I'm not quite sure who would reach out to them. I'm happy to do that on behalf of the select board if you want, or if, you, uh, if it's uh, appropriate to have someone on the board uh, connect with them, that would be fine. Yeah, either way. Uh, yeah, we can, 
that's something that probably uh, we'll have in the handle, Clark, if you don't mind, you've been working with these firms. Yeah, so you'd like me to do it? Yeah. Um, but before okay. you, you do that, um, one of the questions I had, so this was all falling under the, uh, the grant that we had for this feasibility study, is that correct? Well, the, you know, you know the little, it's fairly convoluted, frankly. What happens is that now uh, a, a firm has been selected. I'll be contacting uh, Tom Brown and um, one other person that just has come um, on with um, the projects. And what they're going to do is they actually will be negotiating with the firms in terms of the scope of the work and the, and the fee. Um, and the, the town will be involved with that process. And there may be a, an opportunity. This, this may be actually an opportunity, Ray, for you to and, and answer some of the questions that come up. Um, or, or, or maybe me, I'm, I'm not quite sure. So the, the next communication that I have with the board will probably be it could be as early in a, as a couple of weeks at the next meeting so that I can update you on the, a little bit more of the nuances about where this goes from here. Um, the town is going to be responsible for filling out um, an application of which um, I volunteered to do, uh, but a lot of the work is going to be done between the firms and the state point because it's, it's the state's um, dime or dimes that are going to be paying for this. Um, so that's, and I wish I could be a little more specific, but it's a, it's a, it's a relatively long process. And let's see, it's the first of August. Uh, sense is that probably, you know, we're going to try to get shoot to get this done around the first of November, end of November, something like that. There are different completion dates that, um, and, and horizons that the state has set up. Um, and like I said, the next time I meet, I'll be able to give you more specifics in terms of when that will be done. Good. Well, I think you answered my question by the, the state's dime. So I did like that uh, answer. Thanks. Uh, Clark, did, are you anticipating or should we anticipate using any uh, Recovery Act funds for this at this time? You mean the, uh, the, what has been, um, um, you mean the ARPA funds for the town? Yes. No, no, not at, not at this point, Ray. We, um, okay. yeah, the, 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 the cost for this is probably going to be somewhere between 90 and 110,000 or something like that. That's kind of the ballpark that. You know, we've kind of picked around. Um, and yeah, so no, we're not going to be asking for any ARPA funds. Okay. Uh, just to be clear, uh, Clark, uh, I, I didn't want to get involved in the selection process, and I told you that, but I'm glad they, uh, now that we've made that selection or going to make that selection, I'm willing to step in again and help you any, any way I can. Yeah, I think we're, when I, um, when I, I'm going to contact the state, probably not tomorrow, on Wednesday. Um, kind of make sure that I understand what the timeline is and then, you know, it'll probably be important to, and then, then that's when, you know, that we, you know, you and I, and maybe the committee can start working on this. Um, and, and I know I'm jumping around the committee. Um, there's a couple that I'm um, staying involved with this, um, Jay Pulley, uh, specifically. So, um, it'll be great to have Jay, um, around as well. So, um, yeah. John, or um, anyone else around the table? Callie? Don, any questions for uh, Clark? No, no question. I was just making sure that more time didn't have to spend any money. Sounds like we're not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean um, eventually we may have to spend some money, but um, right. you know, the point is to get the building um, uh, paid for out of other funds. Um, the um, state revolving fund. So that's that's uh, hopefully where this is going. Okay. Actually, Clark, I do have one question. Sure. Clark, what's your sense, sure. of, just as you've been working on this and with some of the engineers and such, what's your sense of the, the, the feedback you're getting? Is it actually, there's something, it is possible? Is it can be well, a, you know, a, a location yeah. in the village to have a treatment and all the plant and all that? Yeah, that's yeah, that's my question. It's like going for treatment. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good question, Callie and Donnie. Um, so uh, there have been a couple of 
comments that engineers have sort of made off the cuff as they've looked at the topography of Moortown Village. And, you know, the, one person, if they're thinking, well, I, where are you put it kind of question. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, that's what the feasibility study is supposed to answer, you know, is whether or not we're actually going to have an opportunity to. Uh, I think that's me. Mark, <laughs> someone backing over you, Clark. Look out. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you backing up? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we don't know. I mean, the, I, the, and the, this is, I don't think this is irresponsible speculation, but it is something that's come up. So um, one of the things that we've learned is that the system that's up on the hill that serves the school, in order to put a system in like that, you have to have a backup site in case that place, in case that fails. So there, there may be actually more capacity up there than, than we think. So, anyway. Anyway, okay. okay. All right. And you also have to think of maintenance, too. Yeah. Because yeah, that's your, right. your road department cannot maintain your sewer system. So right. there you oh, go. Absolutely not. You'll have to, you'll, to do it. Yeah, you'll have to hire, in, you know, um, maintenance people to do that. That's part of it. I mean, you know, as we go down the road on this, if we get that far down that we're actually answering those questions, you know, we'll have made a fairly serious commitment to you know, press on. All right, so I move to accept um, the committee's recommendation for Otter Creek Engineering for the feasibility study. No second. Any further discussion or questions on that? the motion? All in favor, vote aye. 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 Against? I abstain. And Ray abstains, so thank you everyone. So Clark, um, you can go ahead and reach out to uh, Otter Creek, but more so the state and let them know what direction you're going or where we are going. Yeah, and uh, let me just double check something here um, because yeah, uh, if you'd like me to come in on the 15th, um, I can do that. So just let me know. Okay. okay. Thank you, Clark. Okay, all right. Hey, thanks everybody. Okay, thanks, Clark. You're welcome. And the noise went away. Yeah, he goes away and the noise goes away. <laughs> Imagine that. All right, well, thank you, Clark, for your, your time. All right, so we are moving right ahead. We are two minutes behind. Mark from the Waterbury Ambulance. Hi, guys. Hey, Mark Potter. I'm the director of the Waterbury Ambulance. This is Maggie Burke. She's the administrator, administrator, administrator. We just thought we'd stop in, give you a little update on where we are, especially where we are with our building project. I'm sure you've heard about by now, but if not, you're gonna know about it by the time you leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so as you guys know, we celebrated 50 years this past year. We covered more times about the section that we do cover, just about all that time. We moved into our new core, our quarters in 19, early 1980s, I think it was 1983. And the quarters were great for that in that time period, et cetera, but we have outgrown there. BC, or before COVID, we would do but, uh, stop and leave trainings, public CPR trainings, things of that nature, as well as our own trainings in that particular location. But now the ambulance has gotten, gotten bigger. The ambulance that we're gonna take delivery of next year is eight inches too long to fit into the bay. So, and we've known for a long while that these quarters were, were substandard. So it was time to start looking, and it took us almost five years to find the location. We finally have, it's down on Route 100, or the Waterbury Still Road, right where Bourne's um, tanks used to be, on the left-hand side, going north, just past Gupso Road. It's on the left-hand side. So that's where we're, we're going, we hope. But per, the permits are all, permit applications are all in, and we're just waiting for approval. Copley is also going in there and putting in Mount, uh, Mansfield Orthopedic Building in that same location. So as soon as the permits are done, the land will change hands and we will commence building at this point in time. It looks like we're gonna be at least putting in the road before the end of the year. And with a lot of luck, construction right after the first of the year can begin, if all goes well. 
So I'll give, let Maggie give you this the rundown of, of what we're planning, what it looks like, the scoop. Yeah. yeah, so the scoop on the building is we are fundraising $3 million towards the project. Um, when we initially started, it was 2.5, but as you know, with inflation, um, the issues that we've been having with supply chain, we've had to bump that up to 3 million. Uh, I've got some brochures that I'll share about the project. Um, we've been fundraising um, not only from individuals, but grants, uh, corporations. Uh, we're going to be putting an event on in the fall and basically doing everything we can in order to raise these $3 million. Um, in terms of our capacity with this project, Mark and I are full-time with Waterbury Ambulance. Mm -hmm. We have um, eight per diem employees, and the remainder of our squad is all volunteer. Um, what's happened nationwide with volunteers is that uh, volunteerism and EMS has decreased. Uh, that's because of the amount of strict time and energy that it takes to get the certifications and keep them up, as well as just kind of the way the world has gone, that people have less time to volunteer. That being said, we still do have 35 volunteers. Um, who are volunteering you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week to respond. In terms of our service area, 76% of who we serve is Waterbury, 4% is Moortown, and 20% is Zephyr. So Moortown is a small portion of what we cover. Um, we cover as far as and including Lover's Lane from Waterbury over. Um, Mark mentioned those space restrictions. So one of the things that we've had to consider is having overnight accommodations as volunteerism has gone down. We've had to bring in folks from other towns to come stay and our current facility doesn't have adequate showers or uh, sleeping quarters for staff members to be there. Um, so where we stand with our fundraising is we had available $1.5 million. That was from saving over the last bit knowing that this project is coming up. We've also been significant in COVID response. So we've been testing and vaccinating. We started with just a couple testing sites and we got asked by the state to start doing homebound vaccinations. And now last month we did 90 different vaccination clinics throughout the state. So we're not just serving this area, we're going all over, um, at least central Vermont. We don't go into Burlington a little bit. Uh, we are at Morfest vaccinating. We've come here to vaccinate and then our test site in both Berlin and Waterbury has been us. So that wasn't just Mark and I and our small team of 40 or so. We hired on over 200 employees, uh, nursing students, uh, EMTs from other areas. Mark has a long history in EMS here in Vermont, so we're able to kind of gather our friends together to really make that happen, and we were able to gain income. Something important, too, is we're a 501c3 nonprofit, so we aren't part of the municipality of Waterbury, we're our own separate entity, which is good and bad in different ways. We're grateful that we have the opportunity to have some independence though. So that 1.5 we had available from that, we've raised an additional $730,000. That leaves us, so we've raised a, a total of $2.23 million, and we have 770,000 left to go. So we still have a ways. Um, we had one donor come in and give $500,000 in order to name the facility after the um, Karen Steele, whose husband Ed Steele helped start Pilgrim Park and was a huge part of the Waterbury community. Um, really, when we're looking at donors, most of the people that are giving are from within our service area because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for folks from out our, from not within who we're serving to give. Uh, we went and met with the Waterbury Select Board in the beginning of July or middle of July, July. Yeah. Um, and, and spoke with them at a few different community members' suggestions um, to request ARPA funds. And what they said was they gave approval um, to give $76,000 towards the project. Um, and there were two contingencies. One contingency was voter approval, and the other contingency that was those percentages that I mentioned earlier, 76% of, of Waterbury is who we serve, 20% Duxbury and 4% Moortown. They were interested in those towns matching at their level that we serve towards that contribution to make a total of $100,000. $100, and I hope that I was clear. So $76,000 would come from Waterbury, $4,000 from Moortown, and $20,000 from Duxbury. So we're here to request that $4,000 appropriation of ARPA funds towards our project. Anything to add, Mark? 
You covered it and took my steam too, so. Sorry. <laughs> no, let's go. <laughs> Any questions? Um, with the building being way on the other side of town, if you will, now moving out, what, as far as your response times down this way, you see those so increases? The response time actually is always going to be better because we're not coming down up to a well road for 1.7 miles. So we're just going to be right up the road, right out to 100, right, right there. Mm -hmm. Um, anybody? John? I mean, uh, Ray? Kelly? Is this something we can just put in our budget too if we want next year or something? Or is, are you saying it's needed now or these towns are putting it in there so for next year? What, what would work? Like we normally do, right? Yeah, what would work is just a commitment at this point in time. Cash is not needed now. Uh, it just to, I hate to use the word pacify, but satisfy Waterbury. Would they have the two contingencies? If there's a commitment on the part of more time than that, that's fine. That's great. That's most appreciated. Well, it's, it's certainly um, uh, tight budget times so, but, uh, for you and us as well. But I mean, it's a service that we we all use mm -hmm. and, and need. We appreciate what you do. We appreciate you, you know, showing up at Morefest. I know a number of people get vaccinated from town. It was cute, um, actually, the first day that we opened for boosters for the older yeah, folks. And it was adorable. Yeah. People were running and grabbing their friends. And <laughs> yeah, never no, seen so many. Yeah, I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're running around pretty people. It was very fun. But. So I can certainly support a $4,000 donation to the uh, Waterbury Inlets EMS. Um, I'm not sure what it will take out of ARPA funds, but as long as we can give you a commitment and figure that out, um, you know, by the end of the year, either pay, you know, depending on how our budget is, either this year or the first of the year, um, but no later than the end of January. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll give this guy to vote on first. <laughs> is that the motion? That was the motion. Okay, so I'll second that. Any further discussion? Well, would it also be something that, I mean, you know how every year in, the, in our town budget that we present, we have line items for ambulances. Exactly, stuff. that's, that's yeah. why I said we can yeah. Yeah. We'll figure that out. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So all in favor, vote aye. 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 All right. So there you go. Thank you. Unless you want to hang on more time, I said it never on River Road. Well, thank you for your, um, your work with the MLC. That's one of your Top job. Did you buy, are you got, um. Marjorie bought that first house. Oh, oh, oh I know, I know. Yeah, it's a big set of audio. Yeah. We go feet. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, so let's uh, move ahead. We have um, the paving bits on the River Road project coming up. And we have now gone ahead of our schedule by two minutes. So, Ray, what do you got with the, uh, the bits here? Okay, looks like we have one, two, three, four, five bits. Is there anyone else? Because there was rumor that someone was coming with bits for the paper. All right, see in here, none. Um, Ray? Um, the first bit, and I'm just going to read the pricing at this point. Yeah. And then we can review them, or I can review them later. But. Uh, we have a bid here from Pike Industries, a total amount of $160,881.40. Uh, Say that one more time, right? $160,881.40. All right. Uh, we have a bid from ST Paving, $170,350. Fresh Coat Asphalt Services, $170,780. Frank Whitman, Whitcomb Construction, $162,465. And the last bid is from Jay Hutchins, $187,000. 
$278.75. So the apparent no bidder at this time is Pike Industries, and the second bidder would be Frank Whitcomb. Frank Whitcomb. So I would suggest at this point uh, let Martin and I review these along with uh, Cheryl to see uh, what we have for funds. And, and then come back with us with a recommendation yeah. on those. Uh, yeah. Can you uh, reach out somewhere between you and Martin or Cheryl to let these guys know where we're at with that? I will. Um, yeah, pretty important, especially if we want to do it this year. Yep. So, um, okay. All right, then. So, yeah, we'll go there, and then once you get a finalized recommendation, come back and we'll make a motion to go ahead with, with that firm. Can I ask a quick question? Well, sure. I don't know if this, this you know, things come along, so yep. I know you guys have been working on it. Um, so, that, how, was that paid originally because the farm was one of them going operating the farm? And, that was the main you know, reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were having a heck of a time. Yeah, with like the road and mud and the farm vehicles and all that. Yeah. I mean, but now that that's not being farmed anymore, does mm -hmm. it, does it yeah. well, they do, I guess, the machine. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah, you know, I'm just curious, you know. Part of it was the base. Wasn't there a problem with the base material as well? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, that, it was a very wet area. Oh, I mean, it doesn't make sense. I'm just curious, does it make sense to put it back to a dirt road? No. I don't know. Probably not. I guess that would be a slight I mean, there's a cost of that, too, to grind it all up and take it up. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Um, they are still, you know, uh, cutting and hay and storing equipment. Uh, there's there's no still um, there's there's no animals, chopping right? corn. Yeah. Right. Um, I want to say there was, I heard somewhere that um, one of the grandkids maybe was going to take it over and do something with it. Who knows it may. No, I was, it may come back, it may not. I was wondering about the history of that. You know, when we were initially talking about this, and I think it was just last fall, Martin, because that was my initial thought, is we're not going to it back, you know, it's as bad as it is. And I can't exactly recall the conversation, but I know after Martin went through what was beyond why that was there, I, I did agree with it. All right, let's go ahead and look into paying it. Um, I'm sorry, I can't recall exactly yeah. what it was, but otherwise I don't think we that was I don't think we've done this far, but I just I was just wondering, you know. Sure, no, that's a good question. Yeah. That was a quick question too, John. So yeah, all right. <laughs> All right, so let's, um, if there's nothing else with that, um, on my agenda and get to um, the neck of the woods. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, you can come. 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 So, so many of you, uh, did people get what I sent over to Sasha? Yes. Yeah. Chance to look yeah. Hey, do you mind just so everyone knows who you are? Just uh, that would be a great idea. <laughs> Introductions. Introductions, yes. <laughs> I'm Betsy John Grow. I'm a member of the board of Neck of the Woods. And I'm Molly Morrison. I'm the executive director of Neck of the Woods, which used to be the Morrison Education Center for all. Yeah, I think Morrison. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Molly. Um, it's actually Morgan, but everyone calls me Molly. Okay. M O I E. More sound girl. More sound girl. Not used to be my coach. That's why I'm such a good soccer player. It's <laughs> so really not. But <laughs> yeah. I like to pretend. So, um, so we're here tonight uh, because, as if you've read through um, our recap, we are working aggressively to build out a child care center at the old small dog building, which will ultimately house 125 kids from six weeks old to pre-kindergarten. So it's a very ambitious project. Um, we have already, in, the, in our fundraising and through the community, raised over $900,000, which allowed us to purchase the building, put a down payment on it. Um, refer there are a lot of 
state requirements in terms of what we have to do in order to be a child care center, including a public water system, which was $150,000, um, a uh, new wastewater system, which is going to go in this fall, and lots of other licenses. Oh, there we go. Hi. We're out of chairs. Our new star there. We did, I know. Yeah, we're, we're on a tight ship here. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's impressive. I can do that. You, you want to introduce yourself? And, uh, my name is John Donaldson. I'm on the board at Macaulay's. And our treasurer. Um, so what we have been able to do so far is build out the ground floor. And once we get the wastewater system, as I said in the presentation, we will be up to 75 kids. The next major hurdle is why we're here tonight, which is to install a commercial kitchen in the building, which will bring the first Head Start program to the valley. It will allow us to become a Head Start program, which brings lots of additional services, as well as um, more advantages for lower income families. Um, to give you uh, a little bit of information, we currently, as I said, have 51 kids in the building. We also run the summer camp program out of the Moortown School, and Moe also runs the after school program at the Moortown School. That's all under our umbrella. And um, we have a waiting list right now of close to 90 kids, even with all those programs going on. So the need is endless. And to be able to bring Head Start into the Valley is, we think, as do a lot of people in the Valley right now, uh, a huge advantage. And as we all know, child care is like a hot topic. So we're hoping to get from each of the Valley towns um, a sum of $25,000 each from ARPA funds if possible, so that we can begin that kitchen process and we will raise the rest on head of fundraising. So I, I will use that more or less as a match to bring in the rest of the funds and be able to build that kitchen hopefully in 2023. Um, Did you mention how many more town uh, kids? No, but um, right now it's 24% uh, of our enrollment is from more town. And the next biggest town is Wakefield and then Faceton. Uh, Warren is the smallest because they're the far farthest away. But uh, with over 200 kids in our programs right now, um, more town is uh, definitely the number one. Is that supporting a wide spectrum of? folks in town and how are your, your costs, I guess, everyone's getting so an have, opportunity. Um, yeah, so it's pretty, well, it's first come, first serve, but 30% of our population um, is on free and reduced, not that that matters right now because everyone gets free lunch, but um, through the HUSD, but 30% um, of our population is technically lower income and we can raise that even higher um, for, for folks. It's really hard. For families who are lower income to be able to afford child care, even the lower end of the spectrum, which we are. So um, this would be a huge opportunity for us to be able to offer that to them. Yeah, because I see that as, as a huge um, obstacle for, for folks around it is the child care and then just the cost. I don't know how they do it, but, you know. Um, there are a lot of subsidy <laughs> programs that they can apply to, which Molly connects them to. Right. The uh, Madeline Valley Community Fund offers assistance. Yeah, the Interfaith Council um, and I mean subsidy through the state as well, which is shifting and changing. So the more we can help as a whole unit, the better off everyone will be. So this will be a huge opportunity, though, because it also Head Start also offers the opportunity for then to um, for capstone to offer us some staff to pass along to families that basically can do like home check-ins and um, offer services outside of our programming and inside of our programming so it's kind of dual purpose and it's incredibly helpful and so standing in the way is a lack of a kitchen just surprisingly yes <laughs> yeah yeah you have to have a food service program. well there's lots of yeah yeah um, and it has to be commercial, and it's a very expensive process because we have to jerry rig the space that we would put it in, connecting to septic, um, movement of stuff. So it's a very high ticket item. I think it's 190,000 total for the whole build out, all the appliances. Um, but it'll offer us the opportunity. Also, our long term plans for Neck of the Woods is to open it up to the community when we're not using it. So it gives us great meeting spaces down the road. We also happen to own, this is just not specific to the kitchen, 
but part of the building, uh, you know, the building, the small boat building itself is 10,000 square feet, which is massive. You don't really realize it until you get in there. We also own almost a 5,000 square foot warehouse that's behind it, that's currently rented out, but it could be a great community space down the road, which we don't really have. In the, it, it offers the opportunity for basketball courts, climbing walls because it's big and open. So it's really an exciting opportunity for the whole valley as we move forward, what we can do with this building. And we'd also like, if you have any interest in coming and taking a tour, we're always built. Well, not yeah. always. Depends on the kids. We are mostly <laughs> available. Mostly available. Yeah. Sometimes we're sleeping. We're not sleeping. The kids are sleeping. They yeah. should come in there with The other piece of this that's, that's becoming more and more important is uh, other child care programs in the Valley have had to shrink their offerings for staffing reasons. And I think um, the children, the Waysville Children's Center has suspended their infant program for the next six months. So obviously the phone is ringing on our end because we're one of the few places that takes infants. And we can't take them. That's the fault. Much like everyone else. Yeah. So. But the bigger we get, the better. To Tom's question though, are you finding that, you know, because Watertown is so spread out, I mean, are yeah. people coming from the Waterbury side of yeah. Watertown? Everywhere. You know, you know? mm -hmm. Everywhere, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we actually, we have people on the very, very far side. Um, we have actually a couple people from Northfield and then trickling in down there. And then we have folks all the way over on the Waterbury side. And then on this side, we have a couple Middlesex folks and trickling in on there all the way back that way, pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. You even have, I mean, you, we even will find families that work over this direction, we work in the valley, but they live in Burlington. So it's, it's great because it brings people in to work in the valley. We want people in the workforce and we want people in the valley. And so it's a great, it's a great resource for those folks as well. So it's for me it's it's, um, it's actually kind of amazing because remembering you coming in eight, seven, eight years ago, whatever it was, time, asking yeah. for fifteen hundred <laughs> bucks yeah. to do something at the school mm -hmm. and doing it with a few kids and you know. It's just got a more expensive taste now. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> not up and out. I, I'm, pleased, I'm pleased to hear that we're still retaining space for more town yeah. folks. There's 23, 24 percent of what you said. We have a really, a, we, we love the other towns, but we're going to keep it secret over here. More town is our like. I've tried that before they won't do it. <laughs> yeah, we do uh, we have a really nice camaraderie with Morton. So uh, questions around the table folks? John, Kelly, Don, John. So we have uh, obviously a process here. Um, mm -hmm. I can support this. Uh, being this much money, we will have to put it in front of the voters. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this not pass, quite frankly. Uh, and we can probably use um, our, our funds for it. I mean, that's something the board decision as we get down closer to that, how we will um, do the wording for it. Mm -hmm. um, but as long as the, you know, the rest of the board supports it, and it seems that there's a lot of head nodding and, and agreeing. Um, uh, you know, we can give you a verbal, we'll do this um, as long as the voters mm -hmm. so Can you get it on the November ballot? Uh, um, or do you have I, to wait to uh, the next spring? I can get back to you on that. Uh, we can probably get it on the November ballot. I, I did want to um, speak with the Planning Commission too and see what they have for, um, we've asked them to form a committee for the ARPA funds and see what they've come up with to want to kind of align with what they're doing. Um, but it's not out of the question uh, to do with them. Um, but uh, I think, and we'll take a vote here in a moment, but I think you've got a commitment that we'll get it in front of the voters and support it in front of the voters. Uh, so the likelihood of it passing is, is probably pretty good. That's great. Especially if you've got 24% of the uh, people going there, you know, sell it to your people to vote for it. And uh, but I don't think, again, these type of things go over pretty well here in town because they see the value of the... Yeah, the world, you know, the, the need for child care is on everybody's mind, I think. I don't think 
it's something that anybody doesn't understand. No, I think yeah. you guys have done a good job. Uh, yeah. uh, we're way too late in here. You've got a lot of you know good people, uh, Molly. Like I said, uh, we couldn't do it without this girl. Been around, and, you know, uh, She's spearheading it and yeah. pinching to do it. So yeah. you know, again, to me, that's a you know bit of an accomplishment. Yeah, great. So uh, I move to um, put the um, Nicola Woods Education Center uh, funding request on uh, the. Um, ballot that makes sense either here in November or on town meeting for the $25,000 allocation. Second. Thank you, John. Any further discussion and questions on the report? <laughs> Hearing none, all, all in favor of it, aye. 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 We really appreciate your time and your enthusiasm. That's great. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, so I think John, we have probably you and Chris discussing the town, what I was thinking town forest management plan. I'm, I'm not, so let me back that up. I misspoke. A discussion on the town hall management plan. Uh, Don, Deb, um, Corey, Corey, and uh, uh, Carlos. Pardon me. Yeah, I want to see everyone just pull up around the table here. <laughs> What's up, Sam Chris? I'm on the other side. Okay. All right, so I think we were, John, we're working on this here that you sent us? Yes, let me, yeah, this is it. All right, go ahead and take the floor. Okay, I, I'm happy to start. Um, so I know the board had asked us to take a look at the town hall use policy and, and rental agreement. And so we did do that, and this is the draft that we came up with. Um, but um, we also um, um, worked, showed the draft to the library trustees, which is why Deborah is here. And then um, we also, a couple of us also met with um, Cheryl Lynn and, and Sasha. To, to get their input as well. Um, so it has um, it's got, you know, made it bigger rounds. Um, so when we looked at the policy, um, it just it just is really an excellent document. I mean it just it's so clear, it's very well written. Um, so there, we, there really weren't a lot of changes that we made. The changes that we did make were ones that reflect the current status of the building and its use. Um, and so I know that you, you have had an opportunity, hopefully, to, to look at this. Um, and um, anything that um, is in blue is either a change in the language or it's actually new language. Um, and you can flag in red just means we have to still clarify that a little bit. And then everything that's in black type, with one tiny little exception, which I'll get to, um, is, is just current language. So anything that is in black is not changed at all. So we're just hoping to obviously, you know, that hopefully that would make it easier to go through and, and note changes. So I wasn't sure if you wanted to just um, go through it in a linear fashion, or if you wanted to just start with questions that you have. It's really up to you how you how you want to proceed. We might as well just go right through a linear fashion and start at number. Looks like there's nothing with number one. No. Uh, number two, priority of use. Um, and so you're adding uh, language. Go ahead, Carl. Right. Well, like, again, the first part, the first part of that paragraph is comes from the you know the um, prior agreement. The only thing is uh, on the third line where it says utilized by town staff, boards, commissions, and committees. Before it also said and town sponsored events. And so we just changed that to say for community programming and events because we felt that more reflected, um, you know, what is happening now. Um, so, um, so that was that was the change there, and also obviously not during regular library hours. And um, and then again, the, the sentence accommodations can be made for immediate needs. You know, for example, a memorial service or use during an emergency. We didn't mean that those are the only two that we were just, you know, mentioning a couple of examples that might then take precedent over the, any other commitment or schedule. So on a um, Saturday, we couldn't do anything. It says between 3 p.m. and 12 a.m. I think that's 
Is that correct? Those, no, you, you could. Can. You can't. Can. You can't. Can. 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 So I, I, it seems like Saturday there's a possibility that people would want it early at 3 o'clock if they had a, a wedding reception or, or some other function like that. Uh, is it possible that you could word that, that uh, Saturday, there may be more time available on Saturday if we uh, do uh, approval of the event or something like that? What has been the conflict now? I mean, as far as, because once in a while I see libraries closed for a private event. How many, how often does that happen, Corey? Well, the pandemic sort of skews everything, right? So I would say, uh, starting with the Nutcracker event, it's probably been, what would you say, four or five times? Mm -hmm. um, and I think just it's it's a balance, right? Because if the library becomes unreliable, people won't they'll never know whether it's open or not. And you know, someone used the example of what if they send their kid there after school on a Tuesday, not knowing that we had to be closed for a different event. Mm -hmm. So it's that tension. And I, I will say I think Saturdays, I think a weekend day is important to preserve for the people that work Monday through Friday jobs and we're only open till six during the week. So it's something where, you know, maybe we shift our hours around a little bit. Um, if, if it feels like there's a real need for Saturdays, I wouldn't say that's been the only day that we've been asked to be closed by any means. No, I, I, I certainly understand that. And that going into it, we knew there was going to be those days that needed to be closed because of the other uses of, of the town hall. I think what happens is that, um, and like Corey said, it's not like the old days when a lot of people were renting the town hall after all, it does have some, uh, a few, the basement is kind of not really habitable at the moment, you know, and, and um, the insurance certainly is an issue as well. So, but I think that sometimes maybe just the coordination of the rental as we move forward. And I think this is what we're trying to also address in, in here is, you know, how we go forward coordinating rentals. So when there is a case of, you know, you're celebrating an anniversary and you want to start partying at two, but you've reached out in advance, you know, far enough in advance, then accommodations can be made. Yes. Yeah. Stuff like yeah. that. I think and as we go further through the document, you'll see it's kind of addressed that way to try to how to get to that that spot where things like that can take place, but the management of it is, you know, is coordinated with all the parties. And I think to have like a really clear document that we all follow, it might be good to even come up with like, how many times a year would the library close on a Saturday for an alternate event? So that it can be something that everyone just follows without having to be subjective about it. I think as a library trustee, that's my concern, is that um, sometimes the communication isn't clear among all parties, and so the library is scrambling uh, to get people to help break down, to get people to help set back up, because it seems like it's last minute, because the communication hasn't been that clear. And to Corey's point about Saturdays being such an important day, I think that the library does have hours. I go in and I see families, and it's just a real opportunity for community to use that space um, and have it be count honorable. And I guess my thing, again, is just how do we clear up communication so that the, the, so that we're not scrambling to try to move things, but feel as if transition to a different event happens in an orderly fashion, where all parties feel respected, where we can inform the town, people of the town, hey, this Saturday or Tuesday or whatever, this is happening, with enough notice that it feels as if mm, we recognize that um, I guess I'm a library trustee, that the library is what takes 
the most time there, and that we're open to other events around the library for the most part. To speak to your point, though, right? There needs to be some flexibility in there. But maybe, as Corey says, we say seven times a year, or 12 times a year, once a month. We could, you know, whatever. I'm just saying, so it's just very clear. People aren't blindsided, and all parties are operating in the same playbook, and we can go back and say, oh, but this was our understanding over here, and we can refer to a paper trail. I think that will be helpful in clearing up communication. I just worry with that, that people may not rent it. If you say we're only going to allow you to do something once a month on a Saturday, if someone's trying to plan a funeral, then... Oh, no, 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 it's clearly, it's clearly a funeral. Accommodations can be made for immediate needs. Like this past fall, we had a beloved community member pass away, and we cleared out, you know, within three or four days. If someone's planning a wedding for next June, you know, it would yeah. be nice to know that. And, and I would just point out, like this year, we've had almost a thousand visits in the space. We've had over 350 people participate in programs. So like, it's not like that space is restricted and people can't use it. There are people using it daily when we are open. I just want to clarify too, I didn't mean that it shouldn't be open on Saturdays. I just meant additional. Like right now we're saying it's available from three, three. Right, to every, every Saturday. But maybe one Saturday a month it could be from noon to minute. That's I or accommodations can be made yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I, I think it's also uh, and maybe we should just keep going through yeah, it. Sure. Yeah. Or what well, I was just going to say, on. keep in mind the other piece of this later this evening is, you know, um, is, and part of the, I mean, part of this piece also coincides with the fact that, you know, we've sent out this RFP and we're going to starting to think about this, the next phase of like, of upgrading and renovating the town hall. So this kind of goes hand in hand with that because some of the accommodations that will be made if we select them when the architect shows us this couple of different different designs that we've come up with. Um, and it, it'll make even, the, there'll be more uses going on in the town hall, which will drive having someone, you know, having a management system in place and this document, you know, this is just the beginning. It's not necessarily we're going to walk out of here tonight saying this is the gospel, you know. But, you know, again, as, as we fix the building up and more people use it, and there's the basement is a viable space, and mm -hmm. you know, the library is there, but then the shelves are going to move so that the town hall meeting can be there, and you know, I can have my 75th birthday party there because that's about when the project will be done by it. <laughs> but you know, can't be that far away. <laughs> thanks, thanks. That was nice. The rain, that was yeah. right across the Anyways, so let's carry on. <laughs> you know. um. Go ahead, Carla. Did you yeah. want to? Um, okay, yeah, and again, this next page, uh, there, there aren't a lot of changes. It wasn't, we actually did remember it just because we thought that we should put the kitchen and the parking away for the, uh, just to make it really clear what is available and what isn't. And, the only change we made to the kitchen was the original one said that you know basically it was a full you know full functioning kitchen and you know at this point it's not um, so we just you know wrote that it's you know it is somewhat limited um, so but otherwise you know you can see there's really really no changes um, to the kitchen the parking the prohibitions all of that other than again we also thought for parking we should try to let them know exactly what how many spots they really are there and just how limited that is just so that's kind of up front mm -hmm. so does anybody here know how many yeah, so spots is like <laughs> go with the town hall Depends on how close you park. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know you like that still in this, yeah. in this design. Yeah. Right. And also the time of year. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that's true. And we're parking on the other side at the grace of the sun. Yeah, right. Which 
I don't think we should really count it. So, uh, so, um, so we can, I can have it. Martin and maybe Ray, when you get a chance, why don't you go out and really measure out what do we have for. I might say no more than 10. You think there's 10 or less? No, there's no. I think there are no more than 10. No. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's an easy answer. I'm going to say no more than five. Uh, I was going to say four. Yeah, yeah. 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 One concrete piece um, in for the drain system. Right. The, you have the handicapped spot. Uh, yeah. 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 If it's not winter, three to four, you can have more up against the created. Yeah. I think it's about six. Yeah. <coughs> numbers. That's why I'm But it does seem like it'd be good information to provide a renter, just so that you don't run into the issues of having them park. So I think it does talk about um, not parking in the back yes. because those are private. So yeah, maybe in both spaces that could be uh, highlighted. You have to remind you you have the four spaces mm -hmm. plus the parking lot up here to right. use. Um, so that they do know that there is. Well, actually, but parking right behind the town hall by the gas tank is the town of the spot of the town hall's land. That is true. Right. Mm -hmm. So that. I mean, I have seen 10 cars parked there before. <laughs> On both sides, though. On both yes, sides. Yes, right. Right, but not to count. But not yet. What, the, you know, he might have shingles out that day or something. Well, anyways, we were trying. No, no, to... both sides of the town hall. I mean, up against the town hall. And yes. There. And behind a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, John, we'll park your cars there. But <laughs> your new SUV, you put 10 of those. Bottom line, I would prefer to see the municipal lot use more. And Don and I have been working on a crosswalk. Yep. So that's great. You know, and that would, be, that would be really ideal. Yes. All right, so we have at least one thing to come back to revisit number of parking spaces. Mm -hmm. All right, Carly, go ahead. And then, uh, on the next page, the, the cleanup, the one issue that we came up with, we started talking about the fact that now you need to, to separate food scraps. And so we started thinking about, OK, if you have a renter and they have food scraps, they have trash, they have recycling, you know, and how difficult is that for the town hall custodian? And, you know, and how do we set that up? And so actually when um, a couple of us in that, but Charlotte and Sasha, they actually thought that was just really kind of undoable. And they believe that maybe what we should say is that it just is not trash removal services provided. And then if you have the town hall is that kind of packing and pack it out philosophy. And you just need to take care of your own trash because, you know, again, if somebody does it correctly, then, you know, what does the town hall custodian do if there's food scraps in the, you know, in the trash? Or, so it, that was, that was um, their suggestion, but it's, it's just not an option. All right, I think if it's clear and spelled out and the reasons behind it, it would make sense to someone. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that is cool. Yeah. Um, and then um, in, on nine, I mean, this, um, I think this is where we try to separate out the responsibilities of um, the, the town hall manager, the, the town clerk, and the town hall custodian. So um, in the first paragraph, um, that it used to say um, that the, the scheduling of events would be done through the town, um, town clerk. And we have talked a lot about the position of the town hall manager. Um, being a central person um, who would who coordinate all these scheduling events. And, um, and so actually in the second line there too, actually, which is where it said, um, if there are any questions involving space, facility, or equipment available, that phrase actually should also be in blue because that, that is new. And so that was one of the reasons we talked about having a town hall manager um, be someone um, probably um, as a library staff person or something, not only because of scheduling events and the number of events that happen through there, but even that there are questions maybe about space, about the facility, about what's available in terms of equipment and all those kinds of questions could, could be answered through a town hall manager. Um, and then the second paragraph then does stay exactly the same where it talks about all insurance certificates, deposits, payments, all would still be mailed to the more town town office to the attention of the town clerk uh, or dropped off during local business hours. If there's any questions about payment, um, that would also be the town clerk. 
Um, so all of, all of the paperwork would still go to the town clerk and, and be processed the way it always has been. Um, and then that last paragraph about the town hall custodian, uh, again, is, is um, pretty much exactly what it had said before, although there was a question about whether we need to add additional information about the year. And just um, so that people were clear on how that works and what they have to do. Are there any questions, anybody? No? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. And then again, you can see there really aren't any uh, questions for 10, um, 11. Um, I'm sorry, did you want to? No? Okay. Um, 11 is just the only reason that 7 isn't read originally. We were kind of confused about if there was a 7 in one, one place at a 10th, but again, I talked to Sherilyn about that and she said, no, that's all fine. Um, we did add that uh, when we sort of the space, we got the sentence proof of insurance is also required, it should be right there. So again, it's just right kind of um, really clear. And then again, in terms of all the the, um, the the rates, obviously the only thing we did was we took out the prearranged trash trash removal because we're not going to provide that. That would be omitted. I was also just curious in reading through this with the cleaning fee. It says if necessary. So I don't know how it works now. I know like during COVID. Um, Megan was cleaning after groups were in there renting, but I don't know if that's still happening or if that's going to continue to happen or if it only happens. I don't know what if necessary means. So that was a, just a question I had about whether that cleaning fee should just be in there and yeah, I think cover what Megan does to clean up after. Of course, it should be because it should be clean regardless. So mm -hmm. I think someone. Like We'll do a good job, but we should have a consistent clean. Yes. And um, if you have the custodian being consistent, then I think that would certainly make sense rather than my clean and your clean are probably different, right? Yes. Yours being cleaner than mine. Okay. All right, go ahead. So, um, then um, again, just the town hall manager, again, it just listed as a, again, library staff. Um, and then in terms of the town hall um, rental agreement, we really changed um, very, very, very little. Um, in fact, we, we did add, obviously, that um, we thought it should be a checklist right on the form whether or not they need the kitchen, uh, whether or not they would like the refrigerator plugged in, just, again, that's just a quick thing. And then again, um, number five on the insurance, we, we simply moved it from number eight to number five, again, just to put it like right up, right up front. Mm -hmm. I think we did you know, Right, with mm -hmm. the, the rent and security deposit section. Um, and, um, and then the only other thing on um, the um, number six, obligations of the renter, we just added the phrase, um, that um, they would be liable to, uh, for repairs to the facility or replacement of town or library equipment and materials. And then I think that's it. Anything else is exactly the way um, it was in the previous um, policy. So you, you talk about a town hall manager. Were there any other thoughts on how, how that would work as far as uh, being paid for? Is it a volunteer position? Is it a trust payment? What's the thought behind that? I don't think, I don't know that we've spent a lot of time thinking about that. We've spent a lot more time thinking about the responsibilities and the coordination and how that would work um, in terms of you know the calendar of events. And, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I think at this questions. point, we were just talking about it in, a, in this first phase that it would be, you know, someone from the library staff and, and talking with uh, Corey about it. Um, and then I think, you know, think of, you know, down the road, you know, in three or four years, five years from now, it's like 
a lot of a lot of things are going on, and and you know we have some fees for different events, or people are renting the downstairs for different <laughs> groups or meetings. I mean, I, you know, I won't go into all the possible uses, but that maybe it'll be able, and at that point, someone would actually become, you know, we would really need to move it to the next level of a, not a library staff person, an actual town hall manager, you know, at some point, five years down the road, six years down the road, you know, who knows, depending on what kind of stuff we have to go on. But at this point, just coordinating all the programs that the library is doing, not just you know, community programs that they're doing, and the rentals, I think, would be easier to coordinate those, all those functions, you know. And that, that was the suggestion at this point. So are you thinking that, is there something that Corey would pick up? Is that what you're... I think so, or potentially Nicole, and you know, I think it, the level of renting right now, you know, would fit within the hours that I currently have as a town employee. Um, I think overall it would allow for a lot of like more communication. So the sip and shop group, you know, rented it out a few months ago, and I was not aware that that was the group renting it out. And if I'd been aware, I could have like helped them promote it. I could have put it on the sandwich board sign. You know, I could have helped really make it a, a great community event. I think it was successful anyway, but you know, unfortunately I didn't know that. And so I posted a front porch forum that it was closed due to a private event at the library. And so that that's just the kind of like communication that I think would be fixed um, you know, if we were able to to help schedule and rent it out. And you know, having this document in front of us makes it really clear about who can rent it out when sort of thing. So it's not that hard to to follow this management. So uh, currently your your hours, Corey, um, if it's available on these days, you you have library hours, the other hours? That Correct. Might just We're so. open 20 hours a week. And then we do, I don't know how many hours of community programming, but it's not always at the town hall. Like this summer, we've been mostly mm -hmm. outside. So Sasha, what, um, and I'm, I'm glad everyone had some input. Um, as far as you folks or, or Sherilyn, um, does that work for you guys as far as not having to, to do the bookings? I mean, I, I think we originally more was a money tracking issue, but yeah, it seems like that's addressed here. Go through Sherilyn, the treasurer, so that part. No brainer, but yeah, it might take a little bit of pressure off some of the things. So Charlotte would still handle the yeah, money. Yeah, she would need to handle it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, sure. but so. it seems to make sense that somebody who's there, the library, half time at least. Yeah, because I didn't know about that. Yeah, because that's, that's, that that yeah. that's a good example. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, that would have been very helpful. Should we think about though the um, I think the Saturday hours and Ray, you originally brought it up. Is it possible? What? How long do you go until three o'clock? Ten to two, and it takes about four of us half an hour to pack up. But I mean that's the other thing. If so if someone's having a birthday party and they don't mind having it in the library and they don't need everything put away to their floor, you know, we could be ready a lot sooner. And that's where those kind of conversations can happen when someone reaches out to rent the space. Or maybe the library needs its hours to Sunday. I mean, one thing is this can always be changed. So if we try this for four to six months and we're getting a lot of community members that are feeling like they want to rent it on Saturday, you know, we can we can shift our hours to them. Yeah, I think I, it's important to have some weekend hours. I, I, I agree with you. But it doesn't absolutely. really matter when they are as long as they're consistent. I think when someone reaches out to, you know, the, the Matt Corey or the 
and they, they say, oh, I'm looking to rent it uh, October, some Saturday in October, but, you know, I really need to get in there, or some of my team for the party need to get in there, you know, early or something, you know, well, certainly Corey will be able to go, oh, well, yeah, we can do this, and we can accommodate that, I mean, there'll be some working together, you know, and yeah, okay, with this amount of notice, we can close the library now earlier or something like that. So I think having her have the ability to, to coordinate with the renters, you know, sure. and, and the program, or someone will go, well, how about this setting? Before we could go, well, you know, we're having a, you know, it's a studying the bees that day, you know, can, would you consider the, you know, the Saturday before or something? Right. Yeah, it's, I think it's, I'm, I'm sure you're willing to work with people. I just, because you always hear rumors, right, in town, people say, oh, I went to the library, and they said, I can't. That's, I'm just going to say it out loud. None of us ever said that to anyone, mm -hmm. so I don't know how that rumor got started, mm -hmm. but I want that on the record. I have never told anyone they can't rent the town hall, and neither has Nicole. Right, so that, that's, again, that's rumor. That's why I'm yeah. right now it's clear. But I want to make it clear here sure. on the record. <laughs> That's what no, all we've all is. been there helping to break it down and break it and right. set it back up, you know. And if someone and, comes, uh, and if, you know, next October they want a wedding on a Saturday, probably something we can accommodate yes. at six months or a year in advance to close really? the library if you need to mm -hmm. move a day. Yes. I mean, I do think to just be like 100% transparent, it would be good to have it on paper of like what are the circumstances, you know. Is it six weddings a year? Is it once a month? I personally think once a month is a little frequent for people to count on the library being mm -hmm. open. But um, yeah, see, I don't think you need. Uh, I mean, I don't want to lose goosey, but yeah, I think you know, saying that we're going to close it once a month is is probably not a great thing to do. No, no um, I don't think I agree. But. But someone wants to have a wedding in October so, twenty twenty three, right. and, and I don't I think, think that it should. Uh, that we should be at the mercy of, like you said, someone in three weeks wants to have their wedding anniversary or whatever it happens to be. And some of us are late planners, but you know, those type of things we can look them in the eye and say, look, that's not a, you know, we're out to get that. Or they could start so. at three. Honestly. Right. Yeah. Um, well, they can come in and help break it down. <laughs> right. No, I think they're local, you know. Well, I think, that, you know. well, I think that the whole point is to use that little, to maximize. Mm -hmm. Use with an inclusive feel to everyone. Um, so I, I think you know I'm, I'm certainly willing to give a you know a go through and see how it works for the next six months or, or whatever. And till town meeting. Till town meeting, yeah. Right? So whatever, <laughs> you know. All of a sudden, then we hear it, then, then we can, you know, we're all flexible here. I think that's, you know, we, you need to be in these times. You need to mm -hmm. uh, be flexible and, you know, everything's a moving point or piece here. Uh, but if we all have the right philosophy that we're really trying to serve and do best, um, and you're willing to work, get your staff, I think that's good enough for me. Um, and if we have to, it comes a, a point where, you know, in the six months, Say, so, all right, let's, uh, let's put a number on how many times we can change this around. Let's, you know, consciously look at the next six months and, and see what, what it is. Because I don't think you're going to need to, I, I don't think you're going to have that many requests, to be honest with you. And, you know, the funerals, I mean, we can't, those are the type of things that you can hit it and do on a dime. Yes. Um, or, God forbid, another. Flood of storage right. or something like that. Well, we'll have this building too, so we can probably be up high enough. But, um, <laughs> and then, you know, as long as it's not obviously uh, taking too much more in your time, and again, the, the communication back between you and the staff here so that everyone knows uh, is on the right, on the same page, mm -hmm. so there's, um, you know, not checks missing or Right. Or people not getting their deposits back and things like yeah. that. So, should we, we um, incorporate some of these changes just for the? Well, why don't we? Months? Now that we have this, we've talked about it. I think we've 
got some agreement here around the table. Why don't, between now and the, our next meeting, just go through and really see. I think we can make all these changes. But just give us a little checkpoint here. Um, and we may do a few things we want to tweak here and there. But I said that fundamentally, I think it works doable to many people. Yeah, certainly. Sorry. I have one thing I want to address now on um, page two, number six. It says smoking is pr prohibited at the facility. And on page six, number eight, prohibited in the facility. Um, so bottom line is somebody who's allergic to cigarette smoke, it's nothing more obnoxious to have to walk by somebody at the front door. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, pretty much if anybody needs to smoke, they can smoke in that proper. Yeah. So, they're on the premises, there's yeah. definitely yeah. 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 in the building. It's a non smoking venue, um, <coughs> like most restaurants. Right. 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 All right. Is that Carl? Uh, yeah. Is that yeah. Deborah? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you very much for all this. Much appreciated. Yeah. Very much. Just still there. Yeah. 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 Do you want to go right while we're on the town hall? Just kind of go quickly into just talking when we are with the RFP and stuff that we talked about in the last meeting. We want to wait the whole business and stuff. Oh, it's fine. It's, you know, I can bring it up under my old. Yeah, why don't you do that? Um, okay. I'm sorry, I'm paying attention. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So reports and communications. Thank you, ladies. Chris. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Sasha. I don't have anything. I just wanted um, the thing that's over there for you to share contract. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yep. A couple of overnight. All right. Okay. All right. So we'll address those all on old business. Ray, do you have any reports, communications, um, announcements? I have a couple of things. Most everything is up there. Old business, the uh, recovery act, committee meeting, and, and uh, Gallagher's. But I, I did want to bring it up, and that's probably why Mike is probably on board tonight. Um, <clears throat> so there was, uh, Mike had started his work on Cobb Hill. Uh, there was a few issues uh, between, uh, I think communication issues between uh, Mike um, and uh, Martin, myself, and Denise. But uh, I have spoken to Mike directly, uh, and I think everything is resolved. Uh, I haven't heard anything from Denise um, in a week, so I assume that. that have her, her and Mike work things out as far as uh, there was a delay with the logging truck. Um, and they, they, they were supposed to notify us on starting work two days before. And apparently, um, Mike and Martin had met up, and I didn't know that. Uh, um, but Denise apparently was part of that conversation. So uh, I, I think things are going okay. Uh, and if, I don't know if Mike wants to say anything to that effect or not, but I see he's online still with the. I'm satisfied. Yeah, you know, things things are going good. I just wanted to address anything if there was any comment on it. Um, I'm, I uh, yeah, you know, we apologize obviously for the inconvenience. We talked to you guys. You know, we're just trying to do right uh, and ensure that we're making no inconveniences for anybody around. Um, but uh, I think we we should be in good shape moving forward. Hopefully. Yeah. Good. That sounds good, Mike. I appreciate it. Um, so, and I haven't heard anything, so that's always good. So, uh, keep up the communication. We appreciate uh, uh, all you guys working together. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Yep. Ray, anything else? Uh, no, no communication. Kelly? Um, I just had a conversation with a, I guess, camp owner on the trail. Um, there were some. I wouldn't even call them water bars. They're like trenches with a shovel put in like every 10 feet up the hill. I don't know when we figured it out. It was a conversation. So I guess Martin knew it was coming in, so that was fine. But one of the camp owners had 
complain about it coming up the hill because of the sharp edges. So we just went through and kind of cut the edges off. But there was also some complaints about the same person that put them in speeding down the hill and speeding up the hill when he has a young child who's out. His camp is 20 feet from the road and then speeding by it. So 20, you, 25. did you um, tell him to call the state police? He is gonna. He was gonna talk to Riley. He was just kind of letting you know what's going on. All right. Yep. And then there has been some four wheelers coming up the road in the middle of the road. Like I almost hit one of them down on the corner on the Berlin section. Two four wheelers flying up the road. There was a Toyota pickup that if I had been farther down the road, he came on the corner from Three Mile Bridge onto Jonesburg Road and went sideways. So if I see them again, I will be calling the state police because I know I know who they are. Yeah, those you need to report them because if you don't do it, you know who they are. Someone that doesn't know they may hit. So we gotta, I know it's a pain in the road. Reach out to them and say, look at, you know, respect our town, respect our roads. Right. And, and I mean, there are points where we won't go around the loop because they're up there and they're racing and tearing around. And well, when you're doing that, just this, so. continue to call the state police. I mean, just you've had enough of it and it shouldn't yeah. endanger other people. So when yeah. I see them again, because I didn't get to enough look at them this time, but when I see them again, I will. Yeah, yeah I think that's the only thing we can do based on our conversation. Right? Would this be something if we enter into uh, that hourly rate thing with the sheriffs, the, the, the proposal we got from them, would that be something that we could call the sheriffs for? No. I mean, with only one, not, not just one person, you know, whatever that's. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. So that's, that's not the same. Kind that's of thing. not. Yeah, okay. No. But that's where we may, if we went to the sheriff and said, look, if we have constant speeding on Saturday afternoon on Lynch Hill. We could say, right. give him that type of information, and that's what he said, where he would park over there. Right. But he's not going to, you know, it's, it's not like the state police are supposed to, you know, we give him a call, they're supposed to show up, mm -hmm. which we know that is, you know, hard for them based on their limited availability. But if we have a constant, you know, that's happening Saturday afternoons, Sunday afternoons, whatever, you know, we need to communicate that. Um, we decide to go forward with the contract. So if you had done that, we'd fit in in a certain way, but not, uh, not as far as, as right, right, yeah. that's not what that, their belly, that's not their thing. Okay. Yeah. Anything else, Kelly? No, that's it. Don? Um, the communications, no. No, 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 John? No, I was just thinking of getting back to Lynch Hill. Uh, the speed limit right now, theoretically, is 35. Mm -hmm. But with the new regs, we can lower it. Right, so that's something we need. So I would say that would be his first step because I don't think with the speed limit at 35, you call the state police or anything, and the person says, well, I was only 25. Yeah. So. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's not marked at all. That road is not marked at all no, on either side. No. So that's, and you know, if we've read the, if you read the, the contract actually for the sheriff's department, it's one of the things they address in there. Uh, your road, you know, we couldn't call them for that particular reason because uh, if it's not identified and doesn't have the proper signage, then they won't uh, pursue something there. Hmm. So that's. So and now we, we we can do that now. Not right, exactly. Now, now, yeah. now, now we can. So now I think, uh, Kelly, maybe that's something you want to work on. Maybe that project here for the board is trying to identify a few of these town roads that are in need of, um, probably they all are, but all right, this section between here and here needs to be lowered to 25 and these are the signs that we need mm -hmm. maybe do that in your area for the wind chill if you don't mind is that can you do that for us yeah because that hill is definitely not all right so, yeah, so if we can bring that up to <laughs> and we can bring that on our little transportation right yeah, 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 yeah. do that and so then we maybe there's even some funding there to tower park or whatever the ones up there uh, 
Um, but very good. Uh, so John, you didn't have anything else? No. Uh, I guess no other communications announcements. Oh, I just saw a communication with the, the Red Sox announced they just uh, traded Christian Vasquez to the Houston Astros. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that was a rumor. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to see him go. They're playing him tonight, too, so that'll be interesting to see whether he plays against us. Um, anyways, so let's go ahead. Uh, we have select board minutes for July 18th in the 25th to go ahead and approve. I make motion to approve the minutes of July 18th and 25th. Second. Any further discussion on those minutes? Nothing. Nothing here. I'll go ahead and approve those. All in favor would I? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, so I'm going to, before we go into uh, new business, I see Karen, uh, our zoning administrator, is online. Karen. You have something for us tonight, or are you just checking in to listen? You know, I don't have anything um, to add to the conversation. I kind of just wanted to attend just to get a feel for what is going on in the town. Um, so thank you for giving me a moment to say something if I needed to, but um, I, I don't have any comments to add. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I do want to. Say <laughs> no, it's a good thing. I just wanted to um, say a word of appreciation for uh, getting me the remote computer. Um, I think that's going to help with my efficiency and also just being able to address things at times when I'm not necessarily in the office on Mondays and Tuesdays. So um, I know it's kind of a big purchase. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Well, it's, it's important to you to be able to get back to the people on a daily basis or at least their emails. If they come in on Wednesday, they don't have to wait a week to hear back that you've received their emails. So that's um, money well spent, I think. All right. So um, is there any new business uh, tonight? Uh, I just have, is Stefan online? Stefan is online. Excuse me. Stephen, can you hear yes, me? Yes, I'm here. Uh, I just had a question, Stephen, and uh, I know Mark, I think, is on vacation, but what, what, is, what is the town highway department doing in driving, seeding their ditches that they dig? Uh, so we are seeding usually every couple days what we, what we get down. Um, we're just using a, a conservation Mix. Okay. I'm not sure what you're. What you're well, I, uh, I know you, you did some ditching up around Moortown Common, and uh, I did have a, a call about uh, it not being seeded for well over a week. And you know, I know sometimes weather is a factor. Uh, I did get a chance to drive up there and look at it myself, but I think it, it's pretty important that uh, when a ditch is dug, it should be seeded within within 48 hours. You got to get girls going in these seed in these ditches, or else uh, things start eroding pretty quickly. And uh, and I hope that's what we're doing. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, there's sometimes where it gets missed. A uh, little section like between where we start and where we finish, kind of thing, will get missed. But usually not not for more than a week. I would say. You know, that would probably be the right. the max that we generally let it go. Okay. That was my other question, Stephen. And Stephen, I mean, and this may be a question, Martin. Have we, and I, we may have, but a uh, hydro cedar, have we ever thought about that? Or We tried to get one, but it was too expensive. Are there any other towns that have one? Do you know? Uh, Faceton has one. And I think Duxbury might. I don't remember if they had one or if they were demoing one. I think they were just demoing one. The more I think about it, you know, check with your your mother on that and see what, you know, whether they something that they even thought. I don't know if that's something that we would, yeah. you know, as a town, as a, There's to live with someone. Yeah. You know? yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's an expensive unit for a town, but I I could see if we could split it with another town, maybe having it be economical. It's, 
I mean, I think one of those really things, like the repair costs would be split and, you know, all that. Yeah, if you, you know, next time you chat with her, I mean, she's on the select board over there. So just see what their, their thought was is, you know, did they decide not to buy one? Did they buy one? And uh, either way, what, why or why not, if you don't mind. Yep. All right, thank you, Stefan. Anything else for us tonight, Stefan? Um, I've been working on um, some fire truck stuff to try to get that together. I'll plan on coming to the next uh, the next meeting to have some time allotted to discuss that further. Yep, I've already asked Sasha to put you some time in, so that was that's done. Perfect. And other than that, things are uh, things are going good. I did on the on the town hall thing with you guys discussing parking spots. One thing that I thought of is uh, that's a class three road that runs down the middle of that. So we'll have to figure out the I don't know if there's actually technically enough room to have any parking spots by the time you get out of the the class three road numbers. That's a good point. <laughs> Because we, we, yeah, we didn't think of that. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you for throwing some water on our parade, <laughs> Stefan. We thought we had parties. Yeah, no, not a problem. Anytime. All right. Well, get out of here. <laughs> oh, and while I'm on that also, uh, is there anything in there about uh, snow removal as far as the sidewalks and stairs go at the town hall with the library being in there more? Is it something that because it, it's been kind of a split thing. The library has been doing it, but sometimes they don't. So I end up doing it. So it's we weren't sure if there was going to be anything, you know, in there. And well, that's something that we that's can look into. Point. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, address that. Thank you, Stefan. We'll have to make another hat for you, Stefan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> can you just stitch a piece of every hat together? I'll just wear one big one. <laughs> All right. All right, Stefan, thanks. If there's nothing else, we're going to move ahead so we can go home and yep. do what we do. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, we do have some um, old business stuff to address. And I will start with it with the, uh, the sheriff's office. Did everyone get an opportunity to look at the contract that was sent uh, around? Yes. Yeah. I'm pretty familiar with them anyway. So. With the sheriff, right? You have a lot of problems with them, have you? Yeah, they come and take you away. Well, yeah. you know, when, uh, when, uh, we used to hire put contracts and do voice. We yeah, so it all look pretty, pretty good for you. Then. Yeah. Um, so what do, we, what do we all think? Go for it. So we have that. We also have a quote for the radar, for the radar uh, as well. So, and that's going to be your. And then we have this radar too. Which won't right. be that much, but the way to use it. Right. So, um, the, the, uh, the movable radar system is roughly $11,000. You know, is that the same system as um, we got from. Um, What's the name of the company? WorkSafe. Work safe. Work safe, yeah. This is the one that the Sheriff's Department recommended. Right. Okay. So I but, think it's a different type of it, but along the same lines. Okay, okay. So what and, and that was roughly the same. It was roughly the same. Same wasn't it? in price, yeah. I don't know if this one has I haven't done apples to oranges, I think. Right. So that's I, I guess we we don't need to decide exactly that tonight, but um between ten and eleven thousand, we can count on for one of those uh, machines. We have twenty thousand dollars in that budget. Um, so what do we say? A hundred, two hundred dollars a week is what this was coming out to. Yeah. Uh, one ninety-eight. Was that? Was that right? So how many weeks? Um, Twenty-four weeks. It's not even that at this point. Times 200, so that's how much is that? 5,000. 5,000. 
So we should That's have to January first or yeah. to to the to the next time. That's to the end of the year. To the end of the year. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, um, so we should have enough money. We should have enough, yeah. enough money to do it. Sign this, see what that looks like, and then um, we have the remainder to spend on our other speed sources, which I think we can cover that and one of these. Um, you know, this, there's no cost to the state on this. Yeah, just I mean, the bracket. And, and like, yeah, rest of a couple hundred it. bucks, I think it would yeah. know, do that, including the guy's time. Yeah. Um, and I do think, I mean, I think these machines are, are very effective, it, just based on my personal driving habits. And I see them, you slow down, and it's really a recognition thing. Um, so I didn't pick up on the quote though. Is that the one that the sheriff was talking about? That uh, am I missing? That it also records it. This this model. I talked right. to the lady in Texas. They that's where it comes from. The one they recommended, and she said she was going to put all the bells and whistles on the quote. You can build it to something that you want. Yeah. But it should have that included. Oh, so we have yeah. to sort of figure that out. Yeah. Right. yeah I mean, there's several different things, but I would say that the traffic analysis app, with the thumb drive and the manual, I would say that's exactly what we were, we're oh. talking about. Oh, is that what it is? Um, the solar trailer is 800. Um, you know, and then it, there's all sorts of add-ons. But I think the total was with everything. Yeah, the total is everything, but it's split out so that you can pull it out. Um, but yes. So what I think, and I'll work with Sasha, why don't we go over the quotes for the two that we have and see what would make sense uh, and then come back here with a recommendation. But I, I would like to get this signed with the, the Sheriff's Department, get this out so we can get them um, patrolling as, as soon as possible. Where would we, it would be, when it's not in use, we'd just store it like in the town of Rival? Yeah. I think it should be used on. Well, I mean, no, I agree. It, we could certainly be bringing it all around town but yeah. right. in the winter or something. Right, we don't want to get it exposed to salt and things like that, so we'll be careful about or it. Or it's still on or something. Uh, but pretty much, you know, summer, the yeah, whenever we can move it. Yeah, April yeah. to the memory, anyways. Yeah, oh. uh, and see how it goes. I mean, it can't, it certainly can't hurt. Um, and it's funny, I also noticed that John Lynch did buy himself a, 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 a used police. Oh, he did? Yeah, it was used what? Police, police, police car. Oh, and that's what he's parked up there? Well, down, I just noticed that, yes, I went through, uh, and it was parked at these flowers. And oh. It was a new plate that he just purchased, you know, a temporary plate. And it, and it was, you know, you look at it, it looks like a detective car. It was, Oh, there you go. Definitely uh, that, so. But well, on the feedback, though, the feedback only really we share with the sheriffs, that they look at the feedback. It's not like we're going to be looking at the feedback and seeing, oh, look at Tom on speeding by. Right, 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 right. No, I don't think it, I mean, it's, not, exactly. it's not taking license yeah. plates yeah. either. No, it's just, like, it's just kind of day on this day of the week, that way they could. Yeah. Yeah. That, that way we can tell them. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't identify them car vehicle. Right. And so oh, I see. But nobody needs to know that. So who um as far as having we need to have that one touch point person with with them over there. Where where do we want to go with that? Who's gonna be the person who makes the call? Right. Because they said they only want one person. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, I agree. Sasha. <laughs> Yeah, I think it works well that way. You're here five, you know, you know, prior, you know, just, I think check with one of us, you know, you and I talk daily anyways, once or twice, just, you know, the type of things that are going on there, just so we are well aware. But yeah, if you want to be that, that person, I think that would work well. But is it the kind of thing that like anybody in town could call or they would bring it to the select board and say, oh, Probably. On such and such a road, this person, you know, every day is just zooming by. Yeah, no, and we hear from, from us, and then we 
Then we, we, so like Joe Smith can call up yeah. Sasha and oh, say, yeah. no. no, we're not looking for that. No, no, I understand. No, and, right. Oh, that happens. I mean, I, I think just the normal course of the way it works now, people call every once in a while and they'll get, because they usually have those people call me or John afterwards. Um, and so we'll, we'll still take those calls, but we'll have Sasha coordinate, all right, you know, for this week, depending on what it is, you know, and so you're not calling five times a week or, you know, you may not call them, you know, in a few weeks, but uh, you kind of, all right, it's Thursday afternoon, let, let me reach out to uh, the lieutenant or whatever it is. And, um, but, you know, we can talk about that. So we'll go ahead and... So that'll start as soon as they get signed? Yeah, we'll sign this tonight. Um, have Sasha send it off. And so I would, you know, it's not gonna happen probably this week, but within the next couple of weeks, I think they'll hopefully, um, and that's, uh, you know, somewhere. Maybe I will reach out uh, to them initially, just to say, all right, we'll, we'll sign the contract. What's the expectation of when you're starting? And Sasha's gonna be our point person. And so if you need anything, email to her, let her be that person and then if there's something that the board needs to um, talk or, or be aware of, then she will flag it and send it out to us. So if there's a given week that we don't tell them of a zone that we're concerned with, they're just going to... Right, I think it'll, wait, it'll, wait, it'll wait, be... They'll do a couple hours here or something. Like right, that. I think that will be more so what it is. I mean, maybe when we start, you know, there may be some areas that will say, hey, you know, Dr. Saj, hey, why don't you make sure they're, they're doing this? But well, you know, let's let them do their job first, and then mm -hmm. if we start seeing where we want or we feel there's a need, uh, then we can reach out to them and uh, ask them to address that. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. Nice. Um, the other sign that we have is just a note for the, uh, the scuba stuff. And that's an interest rate of, I, we've already went over this, this is just... I think that there might be something else she wanted in there um, that she didn't talk to about. The loan can only be for 22 grand, because that's what they have to look for. Okay. So the remainder of the funds, we need to figure out where that's coming from. All right, and how much was that? Okay, difference of like three, three, change, three thousand maybe. Okay. Well, maybe that's where, um, do you still there? Stefan, um, with this difference, is that something maybe with your uh, windfall with the tips? Is that something that maybe we could uh, count on with that? I think it's around 3,000. Yeah, um, that could be something with it. Um, I sure, I had a, originally planned on just burying it in, in my budget in like uh, in maintenance for the trucks, but looking forward i need to do some maintenance on the truck so i don't know if i'll be able to bury it there but yes we can we can certainly yeah if you did that because originally you thought you would put five towards it this would be a little less and that way you have more to do with your other um activities that you wanted to do yeah, yeah absolutely no that's uh that's a good number um if sasha can just send me an email with the with the exact amount I can talk to the guys and you know make sure it's something that they're all okay with for certain but I'm I have no doubt that it'll you know it'll go okay. through right and we'll take care of the other 22 right perfect all right so pardon me so now we have Let's go down the list here our funds did someone yeah. great okay so we had uh, an ARPA committee meeting last Wednesday, and I had told them that the select board was really looking forward to some, uh, uh, not estimates, but some indications or some direction. So if we wanted to put anything on the ballot <clears throat> by November 1st, we could. So we did come up with some rough estimates uh, we're pretty much in agreement with. And we've already uh, allocated the 50,000 for the season driver, so there won't be any discussion about that. Um, 
They did agree to like a hundred thousand dollar, a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand dollar select board discretion funding to for us to use as we thought appropriate to you know to keep the taxes within reason. Uh, little items like we talked about the balancing of the budget or whatever. Um, so uh, we're. The committee is pretty much in agreement of that, 100,000 for select board discretion. Um, the town hall architect, uh, we agreed to like a $30,000 number. Uh, and we and did agree to the uh, village sewer uh, feasibility study, which it looks like we don't need now. It's, that was 30,000. <clears> so um, we're meeting again next Wednesday, but uh, those, uh, those are the items that we discussed, and you know, I have to bring up the, the two items that came up tonight, the Waterbury Amulets and the uh, Neck of the Woods. I just, uh, I didn't know, you know, if we wanted to get stuff on the ballot this year, but I think we could. Uh, maybe what Sherilyn has to say, but I think we could, but... Uh, yeah, I, I think the... Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the Waterbury Amulets, one of those, that's almost like in that discretionary, the, Mm -hmm. Going to that hundred thousand, the neck of the woods. I agree that should certainly be under. Um, I'm glad that they've thought of that. But yeah. um, and they asked for November thirtieth. I don't know. It's everyone's thought. It's on that. I, I would say we, we put it on the ballot for November. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think it's if it was ever going to be defeated, it would be in November, but um, even then, I, I would doubt it. Um, I doubt it, too. So, I think that would work. Just so, do we want to put the town hall architect work out for full, or do we just gonna just go forward with that? Well, I was I'm waiting. I, um, I think we got it. Well, if uh, you want me to get into the spiel about no. this now, or? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, well, I didn't know if yeah. I was old or new to it. Okay, so, uh, in answer to your question, right, I think we hopefully could make the decision and, and as the select board and move forward um, based on the RFP and the scheduling to have the architect and the whole schematic design process um, with our, all of our participation as they develop, and if there's key dates, as you know, as they go forward, um, showing, taking what we've all put together, what we've come up with, and then putting it together so we can decide. And then eventually, they're going to, not eventually, uh, the schedule would be that by into November, in December, we would have a, a, a construction cost estimate yeah. so that we can then look at town meeting and what we would put up in the you know town meeting for people to vote on and you know what we could get for grants and all that so my take on it would be not to wait till like november 1st to like hey can we do this because if we do then we'll just the, per, the fir firm can't start unless we right, yeah, the tell them to start and then get the money in november you know which i don't know if we could do that do we have a, do you have a dollar amount? Yeah, I do. So we did this whole vetting process. We ended up with two two proposals, one from uh, Vermont Integrated Architects and the other one from um, uh, Gosson and Backman and Montpelier and the other folks that are in Middlebury. And we had four people, uh, Clark, Corey, Collar, and myself, and we did a, um, everybody read it without looking at the proposals and we did a scoring, a vetting system. And then we looked at the proposals. So as we did the vetting, we actually selected the firm that came in with the lower, you know, the lower price, but without knowing that at first. You know. And so we got a price for um, twenty-two nine hundred two, which includes uh, eighty-five hundred dollars in allowances to, you know, do some of the mechanical and the site work and water mitigation studies, and and also to um, one of the fees in that allowance is to hire a construction estimator. So once we have the final design of what we've all picked, we can then have it uh, estimated so that we can see what the costs are before we put it out to bid or mm -hmm. we can vote on it. 
So, um, yeah, I would, uh, I would be great. You know, I, I spoke to the firm, the two firms, to let them know where we were at, and then we'd be discussing it tonight. And then EIA was the, the firm that we selected, but you know, I still needed to bring them to the select board and get it approved, and and uh, told them that you know just to that I'd get in touch with them tomorrow, basically, because then they'll need to forward a contract and insurance certificates and such. So um, I would, I think all of you have been sent the proposals. I mean, I can read re email them to you, but um, VIA has quite a, a great proposal and they've worked in another, a number of towns on town halls and community buildings and I think it's gonna be a great fit. Yeah, if we could, if we're allowed, if we can do that and vote on it and get this thing going, I think we'd be doing a great, great thing for our community. Because our town hall certainly needs some, some help. I, th I, I agree, Don. I think, I think we need to make this step because we have to either go forward with the town hall or abandon it, one or the other. One or the we other. need to have the information to do that. And I would support. Uh, Going forward with the architect as, as you selected. No, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. As I said, it's our last chat about this. We need to figure this one out, whether yeah. it's um, a big no at the end or, or at halfway. You know, it's a big thing to stabilize it. And you know, um, so it just needs to be done. We're fortunate that we have these funds that I've been able to do it. I mean, we only, we only have it, which is a lot of money. I'm not saying so, half a million. And, you know, now the hands are coming out for it, which they're, I think they're all, we've had legitimate requests for this stuff. Um, and I think this one serves the town well. So I would certainly support this um, now. Um, okay. Kelly, what, what's your thought? Mm -hmm. John, I'm here. Sure. So, Definitely. All right, so, uh, Don, why don't you go ahead and make a, um, a motion on that? Well, so I'd like to make a motion that uh, the town of Moortown hires VIA to um, ask for the RFP to uh, follow the schedule that we have and uh, come up with the uh, design and design costs, the design menu and costs for the town hall. Second. John seconds that. Any further discussion on it? Anybody? And seeing none, uh, all in favor of that? Aye. 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 All right. So we got that. That's great. Okay. That was ARPA funds. Do we have any other discussion on the ARPA funds? I think if we're looking at it, I think we should look at putting at least 100000 aside for a fire truck to help with some of that cost. Because, I mean, we kind of kicked the can down the road with this fire truck. You're talking about the tanker. Yeah. yeah. At least a year. Yeah, so that's it why I have. to be done. Yeah. He's um, Stefan's going to be here our next. I mean, we've already got time on the. Yeah. On the schedule for that, so why don't we on that one? Like, but I think for the committee meeting, yeah, we'll talk about it. Sure. Yeah. To bring it up. Sure. Because that's going to be a big thing. Coming yeah. down, that needs to be done. Well, yes. It's, it's yeah, he's talking too. When you order, it's still two years before we get. And it. today, we're, I was discussing with him. Rough prices are between four and four hundred fifty thousand dollars or something like that. Sure. Doesn't fly either, so I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but I think Ray is going to bring that up to your ARPA. I think Stefan is going to be at that meeting as well. He he missed the last one, but he's he going to be there. Yeah. So um, that was going to be on his his thoughts there. Any other? ARPA fund stuff that we've moved out. All right. I actually um, have a request. Karen? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so it has come to my attention that there is no database uh, to track zoning um, in Moortown. And we, uh, Moortown is one of the last municipalities in Vermont to not have that. And 
it um, tracking it in the way we do is um, pretty antiquated, I would say. And I noticed that in my before my time, a lot of organization was lost, um, and I'm trying to put that back together. But and I know the last thing you want to hear from your ZA who's been there a month is to spend more money on zoning. <laughs> but um, I do think it would be a major upgrade and ARPA funds are a good use um, to do that. I, that being said, I have not done the research myself at this point to throw out figures for that, but I would be willing to do that effort if that's something that the select board was interested in entertaining. I think what I'd like to um, maybe at our next meeting or, or it doesn't even have to be your next week, um, a little bit about what that is. Um, and then we're going into to our uh, budget season anyways. And so whether it's ARPA funds next year, we use for it because that's appropriate for something or whether it's just something all right, we decide we need, we need to put in the budget. Um, so I guess the, that's the long answer to the short and yes, go ahead and, and research it, find out what type of cost something like that is, and then the benefit for the town so we know. Um, and it sounds like, yeah, I mean, you've said organization and things won't be lost and, and such. Um, so, you know, expand on that a little bit and it's, you know, something we can certainly discuss and we'll work on. Very good. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and move on. Is there anything in the legal trails that we have? I don't think there's anything we need to address tonight. Mm -hmm. Condensation, blinking lights, we've got that. Well, with condensation, I was, a, you know, I went in, I've been a contractor looking at it, it's been there, it's, it's, he's working on it. Should, I just touched base with him today and he said he's, he's getting close. It's tough to, well, we all know what's going on out there, so yeah. And you've got the work for the blinking light done, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty all set, and I've talked to you know, had emails with different people in the state, and I, I you know, I've got a rough draft, so maybe I can bring it in and have it typed up by the team here. Uh, but before I did that, I was waiting to just kind of go see Mark and just show him what, I, what we got and go through it with him and and um, Good idea. make sure we're all good, and, and then, then we can send it into the state. Oh, he's on holiday, and last week he was way too busy for me. You know. All right, I appreciate that, and thank you for yeah. keeping him in the. Yeah, be good. Um, so the stormwater project, we heard about that. We got that moving the town hall management plan. We uh, possibly at our next meeting we can make some decisions on that. Take the document we got home. One of the things that came up, as Stefan mentioned, is snow removal. Yeah. Uh, think about that. Uh, collaboration, and we'll work with uh, Sasha on that, but to get this Planning Commission, the DRB together with us to discuss ongoing issues within the town. Gravel pits, Don, here, anything? No, that's a, uh, uh, another uh, item I'm working on with Martin and the team there. We're one someday when they were not too crazy, I was going to go while they're having lunch because we have a rough drawing that they've had and we've looked at that we, before we bring it to the board, we want to go over it. So I'm hoping that one of these days I can just pop in, you know, at lunchtime or something. Or bring them, uh, bring them coffee some morning. Yeah, or coffee yeah. or donuts or something. Yeah, food usually will get people together. Yeah, there we go, food. Um, all right, it's we time. We bring people Yeah, okay, <laughs> I know the ones that Get everything but maple glaze then. No, I had some of those yesterday. They were so good. The big picture ones. The big picture ones. Oh, they're amazing. Yeah. The girls were home and they're like, we got to get those. And um, I haven't heard about this. So they were. <laughs> I haven't heard about them. I'll be down here for a moment. Tell them I do. No, it's only all weekend, so you're oh, okay. The only thing they did for two years was <laughs> COVID. Donuts. So they've got that down, I'll tell you. They're, 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 they look at me. I mean, anyways. Sasha, what do we come up with the uh, dash cams here? In Ray. In Mark. Yeah, I had done. 
Yeah, I, Martin is supposed to be pursuing the okay. holding on that. All right, so that one's, and you were gonna talk with Cheryl Lynn about the River Road paving yes. project. Yeah. All right, and I also have police coverage down that road down for old business, so we've addressed that. What else do we have folks people would like to, uh, to go over tonight? I just wanna mention that uh, I did like to act elevators with Martin before he went on vacation. Uh, You'd want, I'm sorry? No, the Gallagher enters the- Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you know, taking over that road. I'm still trying to figure out the whole process, so I don't have much to report, but uh, I am pursuing that to figure out what needs to be done. But Perfect. The, the biggest issue with me was, uh, I don't know, you know, as far as the right of way, whether they have to provide a, a, a drawing with, with all the easements from all the, every property owner for us to get into the road, you know, which is going to be pretty expensive for them. But I don't know. Uh, so I'm trying to figure that out, you know, what the whole process is. I don't think that part alone will be pretty expensive for them to try to get even with some re-owner. Right, you know how that works. <laughs> it sounds, sounds easy. Yeah. It's not. Um, Sasha, so let's add that on an old business so we don't forget that. Gallagher yes. Acres. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. <clears throat> Don, did you have anything else? No, just uh, two other little quick things. Because Ray and I were looking at this. You know, we have uh, some leaking at the elevator at the town hall and um, I think it's because the door is kind of rusted and it's just coming right into the door. I don't think there was ever a guy on that building. Well, I see, I see, I see a gutter uh, break yeah. rack it up there. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was. Know. But now we're going to address that, but in the meantime, you know, because now we're going to get this thing going and see what we have to do. But um, what I was thinking about, and I went over there and, and uh, another time, which is is that for now, maybe if we just put the dehumidifier in that corner down there with this, you know, because it's not a lot of moisture, it's just when, you know, because we don't get a lot of rain, mm -hmm. and run the dehumidifier and just have it that um, Megan and, you know, or myself or Corey or whatever, we can, you know, just be on top of emptying it a little more. That would, I think, help while we get organized. So I was okay. just going to suggest, I don't know how we can. Why don't you yeah. talk to yeah. Sasha? We'll talk to Megan and you guys figure that out. That's, okay. that's all. Perfect. And one of the little, this is a really good one. Just um, the, the mats, there's a mat on the porch and then a mat when you walk in the door. And they're probably 15 years old. They're really all torn and worn. They don't even do anything, you know, because if you want, you know. Yeah. So, do you think those can, how could we, could we purchase two new mats for the town hall? You think? I think. Why don't you get, uh, first of all, if they're doing what they're not doing, you know, get rid of them. And yeah, no, they're Get the sizes out. that you need and then, and then I'll, I'll check I'll, with these we guys. Can check it out. Okay. And see what you, and make sure you, when you are looking at something, get something that is nice and durable. It's decent. I mean, yeah. you know, spend 40 bucks and get something yeah. probably decent. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. But, Yes. Everyone else, any other old business? Uh, is, there, is there any drain or anything at the, so no way to, no, 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 too much drain. No. Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's a drain in that pit. No. Any there is not. No. Okay. Seems like we would have put one in. All right. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have uh, the curb cut here over on the uh, south side of Morton, uh, near uh, McGibbons Road. And overweight permit for uh, the rail level. Another one for uh, the rail level. and baking problem. Um, just community notes. Sign three times. Please. Oops. So I knew that bit already. Sasha here is this.
this contract for the share of John. And so I'll have to look at that with some numbers that we can put in for that. Here's uh, payroll. Thank you for everyone's participation and help tonight. And on that, I move to uh, close the meeting. Second. Thank you, Ray. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.